Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's go over some practice problems on multiplying and dividing fractions in word problems. If you want to take a moment to pause the video to read over these questions, go ahead and do so, otherwise I'm going to jump right into it. I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. For this first problem, Benny has 14 and 3 fourths cups of flour and wants to bake cookies for his friends. If each batch of cookies requires one and a half cups of flour, how many batches can Benny make? So I know word problems can be a little tricky to identify the important parts and to set up the problem correctly, so let's just look at the numbers first. So here we have the total number of cups of flour that Benny has, that's going to be this 14 and 3 quarters. And something else that we do see here is that he wants to bake these cookies, but he needs one and a half cups of flour for each batch of cookies that he's going to make. So trying to take a step back and think about what's going on with this problem, try to think that Benny needs one and a half cups of flour for the first batch of cookies, he needs another one and a half for the second batch, and he needs another one and a half cups for the third batch, and he's basically going to keep on doing this until he runs out of flour, right? And so he's constrained by a certain amount, and that's going to be this 14 and 3 fourths cups of flour. So we're going to see how many times we can fit one and a half into this 14 and 3 fourths before we run out. Since the question is asking us how many batches that Benny can make before he runs out of flour, let's see if we can set up an equation together to represent this. See if this makes sense. If Benny takes the number of batches of cookies and multiplies that by the number of cups per batch, this should be equal to the total number of cups of flour that Benny has. And rearranging this, we should also be allowed to say that the total number of cups of flour divided by the number of cups of flour per batch would equal the number of batches that Benny can make. If you need to pause the video to think about that for a moment, go ahead and do so. So at this point, let's go ahead and plug some numbers in. So we know that the total number of cups of flour that Benny has is 14 and 2 thirds cups. And we're gonna take that and divide that by the number of cups per batch, which it looks like it's gonna be one and a half cups of flour per batch. And this is gonna equal the number of batches that Benny can make. Rewriting this as an improper fraction, we can say 14 times three, that would be 42, plus two, and that's gonna be 44. So we'll have 44 over 3, and we're going to go ahead and divide this by 1 and a half, but that has to be turned into an improper fraction as well. So 1 times 2 is 2, plus the 1 on top is going to be 3. So as an improper fraction, 1 and a half is going to be 3 halves. Again, finding this quotient will tell us the number of batches. And then at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a multiplication problem. So we can keep change flip. So if we go ahead and do so, we can keep this as 44 over 3 and we're going to multiply that by the reciprocal of the second one, or the flipped version, and that's going to be 2 over 3. At this point, we should look to cross-cancel, but I don't think we can do so in this particular problem. Multiplying straight across, 44 times 2 is equal to 88, and on bottom, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And then turning this into a mixed number, 9 is going to fit into 88 9 times, since 9 times 9 is 81, with 7 left over, so that's going to be 9 and 7 ninths batches. So that would be the exact amount of batches that Benny could make using all the flour that he has, assuming that there's none left over. And while Benny can make exactly 9 and 7 ninths batches, he can really only make 9 whole batches before he runs out of flour. He doesn't have enough to make a tenth batch. For example two, a group of four sixth graders have seven bags of candy to share between them. If each bag contains three and one third kilograms of candy, exactly how many kilograms of candy will each sixth grader get? So first, let's go ahead and identify how many 6th graders are going to be sharing it, and we know that there's going to be 4 of these 6th graders that are sharing all the candy. Next, we're going to want to identify how, much, how many bags of candy that they're going to be able to share. Looks like they have 7 bags to share between all of them, right? They're sharing all of it, so we got to be fair. And inside each of these bags of candy, it's important to know that each one of them contains 3 and 1 third kilograms of candy. That's per bag. Hopefully, because we're being asked how much each of these sixth graders is gonna get, we're sharing things, we're thinking about division as well. Let me help you set up a verbal model here to understand this problem a little bit more clearly. If we take the total number of bags of candy and multiply that by the amount of kilograms per bag, this will tell us a total number of kilograms of candy total. And after we multiply those two values together to find out the total number of kilograms of candy, we can then go ahead and divide that by the total number of sixth graders that are sharing that candy. This right here, would equal the total amount of kilograms that each sixth grader would get. Switching out these words for some numbers now, we do know that there are gonna be seven bags of candy, and so we're gonna replace that with seven, and we're gonna multiply that by the amount of weight of each bag, which is gonna be three and one third kilograms. 
And then following that, we're going to divide that by how many students there are, how many sixth graders, and that's going to be 4. So multiplying what we see in the parentheses here, we need to write 7 as a fraction, so that's 7 over 1, and multiply that by 3 and a third, but as an improper fraction, so 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is going to be 10. So this is going to be 10 over 3. So we're going to go ahead and multiply that, but don't forget afterwards we're going to divide that amongst 4 people. Okay, now multiplying fractions, we should look to cross cancel, but I don't think we can in this particular case. So we can just go ahead and multiply seven times 10 on top and that's going to be 70. And then on bottom we have one times three and that's going to be three. And then we're gonna take this and divide it amongst four people. And as a fraction, four is gonna be four over one. Remember when we're dividing fractions, we have to multiply by the reciprocal so we can keep change and flip this, right? And so we can rewrite this let me go ahead and rewrite this over here. I'll write 70 over 3. I'm going to keep that. We're going to change this and multiply by 1 over 4. Okay, so again, that's going to be getting us the same answer, just written as a multiplication problem. And we should look to cross cancel here. So I think 70 and 4 are both even numbers. You can divide them both by 2. And so we would write 35 up here and 2 down here, dividing them by their GCF. And I think we would just go ahead and multiply now. I don't see any other common factors. On top, we're going to multiply 35 times 1, and that's going to be 35. And on bottom, 3 times 2 is going to equal 6. And then if we were to go ahead and turn that into a mixed number, 6 goes into 35, not quite 6 times, I think just 5 times. 5 times 6 is going to be 30 with 5 left over, so it's going to be 5 and 5, 6. And that is going to be the number of kilograms of candy that each of these students or these 6th graders are going to get. And if you needed a little bit of help with turning this improper fraction of 35, 6 into a mixed number, again, you can just use the standard algorithm for long division. 6 doesn't go into 3, but it does go into 35 5 times. 5 times 6 is going to be 30, has a remainder of 5. So that is where the 5 and 5, 6 comes from. And here's a third example. The area of a rectangular desk is 12 and a half square feet. The question is, if the width is 2 and 1 third feet, how long is the desk going to be? So let's start by identifying some information here. I think we're told the area. The area here is 12 and a half square feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and box that to kind of show you that's important. Besides the area, they tell us that the width or how wide this desk is, is gonna be two and a third feet long. That's how wide this desk is. And I think the question they're asking us is, how long is this desk or the length of it? Whenever we have a problem dealing with geometry, typically I like to just go ahead and draw a picture so I can visualize what's going on a little bit better. We do know we have a rectangular desk here, so I'm drawing a rectangle. And the area is the space it takes up inside. It's a two-dimensional measurement. And we know that's going to be 12 and a half square feet. All right, that's how much space it takes up on the surface of this desk. Uh, in terms of a measurement that we're given is the width, right? So the width is how wide something is. And so I'm going to put that, that's W, that's the width. And we're told that that is actually going to be two and one third feet. That's how long it is, okay? The question is, is how long is this desk? And the length is going to be what the measurement is going across here. So that's the length. Again, we can call the length the shorter side and the width the longer side. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I think most people think the length is the longest side. So I'm going to go with that. Now try to think back what the formula is for the area of a rectangle. Hopefully it makes sense that the area of a rectangle is equal to the length of the rectangle multiplied by the width. And for this particular problem, since we're not looking for the area, we don't really need the area to be alone on the left side of the equation. So let's rearrange it a little bit. If we know that area is equal to length times width, then we should be able to say that the length is equal to the area divided by the width. If you need to pause the video to think about that for a moment, then go ahead and do so. Now swapping these words out for letters, we can say that the length, or this cursive L, is equal to the area, which I'm going to say is capital A, and then we can also say that's going to be divided by the width, or little w. Swapping out some letters for numbers here, we can say that the area, which we know is 12 and a half square feet, and we can divide that by the width, which in this problem is going to be 2 and 1 thirds feet. If we go ahead and divide these two numbers and find the quotient, that is going to be the length of this desk. Going ahead and dividing fractions, what we're going to do is turn these into improper. So 12 times 2 is going to be 24. 24 plus the 1 on top is going to be 25. So this is equivalent to 25 halves. And we're going to go ahead and divide that by the 2 and 1 third. So turning that into an improper fraction, 2 times 3 is going to be 6. 
plus the one on top is going to be seven. So we can rewrite two and one thirds as seven over three. Okay, at this point, when we divide fractions, keep in mind that we can keep change and flip or multiply by the reciprocal. And when we do that, we're gonna have this 25 over two for the first fraction. Again, that was the 12 and a half. And we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by the flipped version of seven over three, which is going to be three over seven. And at this point, you really should look to see if you can cross cancel, but I think that the three, seven, and two are all prime, so it's very unlikely, and 25 has two prime factors, or one prime factor of five, rather, and that can't be simplified with anything down below either. So we're just gonna go ahead and multiply across, and I'm gonna continue my work up here because I'm running out of space. And so this 25 times three will be 75 on top, and on bottom, two times seven is gonna equal 14. Okay, so turning this into a mixed number to get like a, a more like reasonable number to kind of understand, we can go ahead and take this 75 over 14 and see what it is as a mixed number. So how many times does 14 go into 75? I think it's gonna fit in five times. Five times 14 is 70, and so the remainder here is going to be five. Okay, so uh, what we have here is 75 14 is gonna be equivalent to five and five fourteenths, and that's the measurement across for this desk. That's the length of it. So now at this point, we know the length here is this five and five fourteenths, so we are done with the problem. But if you really wanted to check this and see if this does work, you can try using multiplication. You could take the length here, which is five and five fourteenths, and you can go ahead and multiply that by this two and one third, which is the width. And what you should get is, if you did this correctly and our answer is correct, you should get this 12 and a half, which was the area for the rectangle. So if you go ahead and do so and it does work for you, let me know in the comment section down below and see if it worked. And with that, we've now completed three different examples where you had to solve some application problems that involved some multiplying and dividing fractions. If you found it helpful, feel free to give the video a thumbs up, and as always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.